Hello, welcome back to my studio. I'm Tim Packer. Uh, this is part of our ongoing series dealing with composition, the way in which we organize colors, shapes, values on our page to engage that viewer's eye in a dance. Today what I'm going to talk to you about is three terms that we use a lot in painting that I find a lot of people often get confused about. And those three things are harmony, unity, and contrast. And so first I'm just going to define what we mean by those and then we'll get into how we can actually use these concepts in our painting. So if we go over to my page, let's talk about harmony first. Harmony just basically deals with how similar things are to each other. So if I do a, a square shape in blue and then I do a square shape in a just a slightly darker blue and then I'll do a uh, square shape in a greenish blue. These shapes are all harmonious because they're very similar. So they're similar in terms of their actual, the shape itself, but they're also harmonious in terms of the color because blue and green are right next to each other on the color wheel. So they're similar to each other in, in, in color. And they're also similar to each other in value in terms of how dark they are against the white of the paper. So these shapes are very, very harmonious. And when we have things in our painting that are all similar, then we get unity. And unity is the idea that everything that appears on our page looks like it belongs with the other things that are on the page. And when we have that happening, we have unity. Well, the problem with having just all harmonious shapes, colors, values, um, tones, uh, while we get unity, we don't have any excitement in our, or drama in our painting. And we get drama through contrast. And contrast is what really draws our eye. So if I were to come in here and do an orange circular shape, now that draws a lot more attention here. And we can use contrast to focus the eye. When I mentioned before about you know, how our eyes are hardwired to detect movement, when we put areas of high contrast next to each other, that draws the eye. So that's the, our center of interest, or those are edges that our eye is going to follow. The problem with, with just contrast like this, this is like that Sesame Street game where one of these things doesn't belong. It's interrupted the unity of, of these things going together. So when we're, we're talking about contrast, contrast is the difference there is from one thing to another. It can be a difference in color, it can be a difference in value, a difference in texture, difference in shape, it could be a rounded shape opposed to a, a, a rectangular type shape. So contrast draws the eye. Harmony, harmonious things tend to make everything look like it belongs together. So let's put that into practice. I'm going to do two little demonstration, just little abstract compositions here um, showing what the problem with too much harmony starting off. So let's just do a a little abstract composition. We'll do it in greens and maybe a little bit of blue. We'll give ourselves like a pyramid type structure to lead the eye up here. And we'll have a little bit of blue. Touch of blue down here. So there, very simple, just simple abstract composition. It's kind of drawing the eye up here, but it's v so very harmonious. Um, but not all that much interest or excitement. So let's do the same composition over here, but we'll add a little more, add a little more contrast so that it's more interesting and our eye is going to be drawn to it more. So I'll try and keep the shapes fairly similar. Just uh, again, a little pyramid shape composition to draw the eye up here. But rather than that dot of blue, let's do a dot of intense orange. So now when we just glance at these two compositions that are fairly similar, this is going to draw our eye more than this one um, because of the contrast from the orange to the bluish green, which are near complements. So this one is too much harmony, not enough interest in the painting, in any area of the painting. This one here, there's a lot of interest drawn to this area here, but again, it feels like one of these things doesn't belong and that's this one note of color in this a whole other area of just greens or greenish blues. So what do we do, what do we need to do to make this belong with this? Well, what we need to do is echo this color or this color's influence in other areas of the painting. And if we do that, then all of a sudden it makes it feel like this orange belongs here. So let's go down here. We'll do a similar 
Again, just very abstract uh, shapes. And we'll put a, just a little bit of the blue in here as well, like we did with the other one. Now to make the blue belong, what I need to do is echo that blue in a few other places so it's not a discordant color note. Now we'll come in with our stroke of orange. Again, draws the eye up here so we're at the same place we were here. What we need to do now is echo that orange's influence in other areas of the painting. Now we don't need it bright, bright orange. I can just put a little touch of it in here with the greens and blues and maybe just a little faint, faint echo of it over here in a few spots. Now all of a sudden this orange feels like it belongs in here because the orange's influence is seen in other areas of the painting. Zoltan Zabel had a uh, kind of a rule of thumb where he said any color that you use in a painting, its influence should appear somewhere in each quarter of the painting. And I find that's not a bad rule of thumb. So if you have a, a discordant color note that's kind of shouting out a little too loudly, um, way, the way that you can knock it back is to, influ is to introduce that color in other areas or to repeat it. So even that, if that orange is too bright for you, I can even just put a few other notes of orange in here. And now these little dots of orange feel like they belong in the painting. This one, if we want to draw the eye to that, we have another way to draw the eye here is we can increase the value contrast up here. So get that blue very, very dark and bleed it out. But now, now we've got, again, we've got this dark value that doesn't appear anywhere else. So we need to introduce a little bit of that color in other areas. And it's a, it's a tight balancing act of how much contrast we need to give us the excitement we want in a certain area of the painting, balanced against the unity of the painting. Um, because if we have it too much, too much harmony, we have no interest or excitement. If we have too much contrast, we interrupt the unity of the painting and it feels like this doesn't belong. It could be a shape, it could be a, a value, it should, could be a color. Could, could be anything in your painting um, that just looks like it doesn't belong. And the one way to make it belong is to echo its influence in other areas of the painting or echo the actual thing itself. So if you're talking about a dot of orange, we can put other dots of orange in there and now all of a sudden it looks like dots of orange belong. And let's come in if we darken the value of this orange here too. No doubt this draws our eye, this area here, but everything that's on here feels like it belongs together. So everything that's on there feels like it belongs together. So remember, harmony is how similar things are to each other. Contrast refers to how different things are from each other. And unity is the idea that everything that you put in the painting looks like it should belong together. And so one of the words that is really important in a painting is enough. How much harmony do we need in a painting? Enough. And how much contrast do we need? Enough. And that's something you have to judge for yourself. As you get better and better at composition, you're, you're able to make those determinations yourself in terms of when does enough contrast give you excitement uh, and when does it cross the line and disrupt the unity of the painting. So that's it for now. Unity, contrast, harmony. Three really important things to consider. Don't mix them up. I'm Tim Packer. I'll see you next time. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you found uh, this information helpful. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. I also appreciate the likes and the comments. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover that I haven't, um, please uh, give me comments. I'll take that into consideration. And I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Um, that's it for now. I'm Tim Packer. Bye-bye.